Ben Barkworth is a 13-year industry veteran, educator, editorial stylist, product line ambassador, and now serves a creative director for Just Be Salon, which is located in Toronto, and the founder of Fast Foils. Today, we're going to hear about his journey and how he got to where he is. And welcome back to the Hairdresser Strong Show. And I'm your host, Robert Hughes. And today, I'm with Ben Barkworth. How are you doing today, Ben? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Thank you again so much for coming on the show. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, me too. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, why don't we, uh, you know, I, I mentioned in the intro that you kind of do, you've done quite a bit and it uh, sounds like the, you know, are you, you know, are your focus, is your focus primarily on your sol- the salon and the fast foils now? Or are you still doing education, editorial styling and, uh, and brand ambassador or anything like that? Yeah, so I mean, my my big focus right now, obviously, is launching fast foils globally. Um, but I do still work behind the chair four days a week, uh, and still do the creative direction with the salon. Uh, so that is my two main focuses. But I still do shoot uh, Naha and Contessa work, and you know, when I get the opportunity to work Fashion Week and stuff like that, I, I do uh, definitely take that. And with education, we're, we're building our education program. Uh, for fast foils, we think it's it's our our core value, and we are education focused uh, foil company. So uh, we kind of doing it all, but uh, focusing mainly on on fast foils launch and uh, behind the chair. Awesome, cool. Well, why don't you uh, why don't you give us a little like a uh, uh, breakdown of like how where how did this all how did your career get hair get started and and uh, what is what were like the uh, the steps that you got into, including, you know, any challenges or things that you, you know, really want to point out for success. Um, assuming that there are quite a few people on the show that would love to hear about an entrepreneur in this industry, uh, industry's journey. Yeah, for sure. So as you mentioned earlier, I've been in the industry for 13 years. Um, and it kind of all started, uh, back when I was 25, I used to be in hospitality uh, business and restaurant manager. And I remember one day, uh, you know, I had several of my own hairstylists when I was growing up and like, you should really get into hair. I think you'd be great at it. And growing up in a small town, being in the closet, being gay, I was always just like scared to get into that avenue because I wasn't pure to myself yet. And I wasn't ready to open up that, you know, can of worms. And I was just really nervous that it was just a stereotype. And um, I really just kind of pushed it away. Um, and then when I was 25, I was like, I don't want to be doing this anymore. I don't want to be working till four o'clock in the morning as a restaurateur. And it was just, I didn't see longevity and I wasn't being true to myself. And I really wanted to open up something new. Um, and then one of my friends at the time says, Oh yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to move to Toronto and I'm going to go to hair school. And I was like, I'm going to go with you. And he was like, really? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I mean, back when I was 18, I uh, had a major accident and I broke my neck. So, um, and that, you know, I'm very fortunate that I'm still here and that I can, you know, have my mobility. And so I've, I've always taken it day by day and week by week and really like want to be true to myself and, and have work on every opportunity. Um, And, I, you know, it was a, it was a Hail Mary that I threw about going to hair school and, you know, changing my life and wanting to be true to myself. And I didn't know where it was going to go. I didn't know if I was going to like it. I didn't know if I was going to be good at it. Um, but I wanted to, to give it a shot. So uh, I literally, that was in June and I registered for hair school to start in uh, October. And uh, 13 years later, here we are. And, you know, there's lots of stuff that happened in between. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I went to hair school. And we all know what it's like, uh, you know, I was still, you know, living by myself and I had to pay rent. So I went to school uh, Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I worked at the restaurant from 4.30 till 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, four days a week. And then on Saturday, I apprenticed in the salon. So the only day I had off was, <laughs> was Sunday uh, because I still had to pay my way through. You know, I had student debt and I was just like, but... I, I was just so passionate about it and I was loving it. And, um, 
Yeah. So, and I kind of did that all the way through school. And then even into kind of as soon as I got out of school, I still had to, you know, I took a different route to get to where I am. And I was offered a chair rental position uh, straight out of school. And, okay. you know, the guys were, they were great. Uh, they gave me, you know, a really low rent. And I was like, I can do this. So I, you know, I just started to kind of do my own thing a couple of days a week and start building up my clientele. I mean, I did not know what I was doing. Um, you know, fake it till you make it kind of thing. And uh, I was uh, still working at the restaurant to pay the bills, but still trying to build up. And I was just, you know, doing what I knew and kind of learning as I went. And back then, we didn't have social media like we do now. We didn't have the education like we do. It was all in person. And it's just very different. Um, and I realized, you know, a year into it, I was like, mm, I'm doing this wrong. Like I, I'm going to plateau real quick and I don't know what I'm doing. So I was like, I need a mentor. So well, what, I, what, sorry, what made you realize that you're going to plateau? Uh, and what, what was it? Just the fact that I just like, I was literally just doing what I thought was right. And what I learned in hair school. And I was like, I was literally still doing hair school cuts where, you know, we all know we have to adapt and evolve with, with our, uh, it's not just a one blueprint haircut. Um, you know, uh, there's lots of other things in between and no one taught me anything different. So I just realized if I wanted to be where I am today, that I needed more education and I needed more training. So I took the plunge and I went back to assisting and I right. uh, worked with my mentor, uh, John Tacone, um, and it was a, a big learning curve because at that point, I'm like, I thought I knew what I was doing. And I went back to sweeping hair behind the chair and literally doing shampoos when I'd already been in the, in the industry for two years. Wow. Um, and it was a big, like, I had to really hold, hold that and be like, okay, like, if you want to grow, this is what you have to do. So it was, it was a learning curve. Um, it didn't work out uh, the way we kind of wanted to. Um, so then I went back to renting a chair and I quit the restaurant industry because I already started to build up a clientele at that point. And I knew that I'd be able to, to do it on my own, uh, and not have to be in the restaurant and not burn the candle at both ends and just work around the clock. And then at that point I was reached out by scruples. Uh, they were launching a new brand at the time called my Indie hair. And they asked me to do an audition to, to become part of their design team. And uh, we had to do a video about, you know, our lifestyle and, you know, our industry and what we think of it. So uh, we, I did this video and I was fortunately one of six of the team members that got hired. So then I became an educator with Scruples and with My Indie Hair. So then I started to do the hair shows and working with people like Charlie Price, William Watley, um, Katie Nielsen. And then those guys really brought me up through the education industry. Um, with, with working with the brand and it was amazing. And at that time, um, uh, beauty, beauty Launchpad had recognized me as one of the uh, top 30 under 30 colorists. Um, nice. And I was like, okay. And my mentor um, that it didn't work out with at the time um, had read the magazine and he's like, mm, there's something that I missed. I want you back. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's give another crack at it. Um, <laughs> So I did. I, I was like, okay. And I knew that we have this special bond. You know, sometimes it just doesn't click right away. Um, and I went back and I went back to the salon and I brought all my clients over again. And I was like, okay, let's, if I'm going to do this, I'm fully admitting, like I'm in. Uh, so I went and worked with him and um, I was with there for a year and a half. And at the time there was some very toxic people in the salon and it's very hard. And sometimes you have to really, when you're working with people and if it's not where you want to be and if it's not a comfortable place, it's okay to say, this isn't good enough for me or I mm. want to change because I don't want to work in a very toxic environment. And there can be salons that are, but then also you can create a space that is safe, that is um, there for everyone that people can feel their best in. And that's when I need, that's when I realized I needed to want to make a difference for, for myself for my guests, for, um, for, for the industry. And that's when I realized that I wanted to create a, a safe space where people can be bold, be brave, be beautiful, just be. And that is where the name Just Be Salon came from. 
is I wanted to have a studio where people can walk in here and be who they are and feel safe and and be their best self. Um, So Just Be Salon was created in 2015. So we just celebrated our seven year anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, We wanted to create a space that it's gender neutral. Uh, I didn't want to have a space that we charge someone more because of who they identify as instead of the work that we're doing. And I think that's really important for our industry, especially going forward, that why should a person that identifies as female with short hair pay more just because of who they identify as? Right. But also as someone that identifies as male with long hair pays half the price. So we wanted to create a space that was gender neutral, that was a welcoming environment. And yeah, that's where just be came from. So, um, and then a year later, um, on the actual anniversary of us opening the doors, uh, I always said, if, you know, next door comes available, I'll, I want it. You know, so the lease came available on the exact same day as our anniversary party. And then we opened B-Side Beauty. So uh, we have Just Be Salon, B-Side Beauty located in Toronto. And that we wanted to create a full service menu. So manicures, pedicures, lashes, brows, makeup, uh, everything on the beauty side. So um, that was the next endeavor that we took on. And so that's now running on six years. Uh, it's the mm-hmm. anniversary coming up next month. So yeah, we've we've that was kind of like our core value um, of, of our salon. And, you know, you go through your ups and downs as a salon business owner. I mean, I had that awful moment of that, that walkout where, you know, you you're, you lose your staff. 2019 was probably one of the worst years of, of wow, yeah. my life. Um, my grandma passed away. Uh, mm. Then we found out that my mom had cancer. And then when I came back from looking after my family, I came back to no staff. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh, like it was just such a blow and I had to build up again. Then, you know, now we have an amazing team. We have 22 staff. Um, when wow. I opened the salon, I was, it was just me and my husband. My husband was working front desk and um, I, I borrowed $5,000 from my best friend to pay first and last. And we, we put all blood, sweat and tears into the place. We painted it, you know, we, we got the floor rent uh, sander to rent to sand. We literally spent all of our time off building the space that it is today. And it, they'll adapt and evolve. And your businesses, you know, aren't going to be where you first started off. But it's all about setting yourself up success with business plans, with um, having a dream and having a vision, um, which then takes me to kind of the next step. Um, which was, you know, uh, working London Fashion Week and New York Fashion Week. When I was with Scruples, they invited me to work uh, backstage at New York Fashion Week, which is an amazing experience and uh, a different part of the industry. That's the thing with with, uh, stylists. There isn't just one thing that we do. You don't have to be locked behind the chair. You know, there's so many different avenues. There's education, there's influencer, there's editorial, there's bridal, like, open up your world like there's it's not just about being behind the chair you can you can be creative you can be influential you can mentor you can there's so many different things anyway i'm going on a pageant here uh (laughs) tangent here so um but yeah there's just so many different avenues of what you can do and i was fortunate to be working at london fashion week with mark woolley from electric london uh mark's company uh is absolutely incredible and uh, I see my company and his vision very similar. He's just a few years ahead of me. And uh, I reached out to Mark and I was like, hey, Mark, like, this is my story. I love your story. Our brands fit in very well. And he was like, hey, let's, yeah, I'm going to be in Toronto next week. Let's chat. So I started talking to Mark and, you know, we, we, our, our brands do line up very, very close. And he's like, you know, we'd love to have you come over to London. I said, sure, that'd be great. You know, we'll work backstage and we'll do fashion week. And I was working backstage and as most stylists do, wear black all day when you're behind the chair or if you're, you know, backstage, um, usually you want to blend in. I mean, it's like my day off or my office day, so I'm wearing blue, but usually you'd see me in black. Um, And I was working back there. And if anybody's had the opportunity or wants the opportunity to work back there, I mean, 
I know I was listening to some of your podcasts this week and, you know, you, you pay your way. It's not, it's not given to you. It's not, you know, you've got to pay your way to get through the industry. All of this was volunteer work. I paid for my flights. Um, it's, you know, if you want to make it into that, you do have to volunteer and you do have to step up and you do have to be, you know, hands for, for the mentors and be part of a team. So uh, if you do want to get into that, you know, volunteer your time, uh, see what it's all about. Anyway, so I was working backstage with, with Mark and we're in black and it's back there. It's like, there's no room. You've got maybe four feet to be doing what you're doing and it's busy and it's hectic and you've got the lights and the blow dryers and the press and makeup. And it's, it's, it's just so energetic. It's just so amazing. But you're also working in very small space. And I just remember being like, oh my God, it's so hot back here. And I was wearing black. And I just remember being like, Black absorbs heat. And it literally, it was like a light bulb went off <laughs> as I'm like, you know, trying to do this final updo. And I was like, wait a second. Can we manufacture a foil that has an ultra black coating? Because when you're doing highlighting service or a lifting service, we all know that it may not be uh, uh, recommended by manufacturers, color manufacturers, <laughs> but we all know if we need to speed up processing time behind the chair, you can add heat to speed up the processing time instead of bumping up your developers. I was like, heat speeds up processing time, black absorbs heat. Can we manufacture a foil that has an ultra black coating that if we add an outside heat source, we can speed up the processing time once again, creating efficiency behind the chair so you get to see more clients in a day. And I remember just getting back on the plane, flying back to Toronto, and I was just in my notepad, just like coming up with all these ideas. And on, you know, I didn't have internet on the flight back then. And as soon as I got home, and I was like, just started researching and kind of developing, kind of seeing if it even exists. And I was like, this doesn't exist. Can we, can we start manufacturing and, and doing this? So, um, that was in 2018, 2019. It was a year of um, research and development and chemical testing, chemical composition, uh, thermal testing, um, and different manufacturers to see if they could do what we wanted to do and if it was even possible. Um, so in 2019, we finally locked in our um, final product that we wanted to go with. Um, and then we were, we were launching soft, uh, we were doing direct to salon through social media, through email. Um, and then try, you know, I was actually the one knocking on doors at salons. Hi, my name's Ben Barkworth. I'm with Fast Foils. Have you heard of us before? Can I drop you off some samples? So like I was beating the concrete in my own shoes, knocking on doors because we didn't have sales reps. I didn't have the, the budget for sales reps. Um, and yeah, so um we were trying to do b2b and i was like i knew the sales weren't where i wanted it to be and i realized that we had to make a change in the, in the industry uh in 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 our business model and that's when i started to look at different avenues of sales but because of our cost of um product uh especially you know aluminum i mean you've got uh, it just was going up and up and up and my price price per unit i was like I'm, I'm being knocked out of the industry like i'm not going to be able to manufacture this and have any profit margins so we had to go back to the drawing board again um so in 2020 we just started being like okay so maybe we could do some hair shows to start you know building up you know awareness and you know magazines and and then boom we get hit with the lockdowns oh. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and oh, I'm sure we all have our own stories about what that looked like. But in Toronto, our salons were closed for 13 months. Oh my, 13 months. 13 months. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So we first closed for three, which and that was when ev the whole thing closed. Like, and no one left at the house, and no one left anywhere, and you know, and then we were allowed to reopen, uh, and then we reopened for uh four months and then the government decided we were going to get locked down again for another nine wow and i mean that alone was you know a struggle for the businesses that we had paying rent on two storefronts in downtown toronto uh still trying to help staff uh with their um 
you know, bills and making sure that everyone was looked after. And, um, and actually with that, we, we like, we drew, drew the line. We're like, what are we going to do? Like, we can't just keep leveraging money that we didn't even have, but trying to move things around from different avenues of, of, of income. And we said that, I mean, the government was doing some support, but, um, um, we said that we wouldn't be able to go more than a hundred thousand dollars in debt. And if, it, if not, it's all done. Like I'll go rent a chair. I'll, you know, and we hit $96,000. Wow. Wow. And then they, annou- they announced that we were allowed to reopen. And I was like, wow, we had literally had $400,000, four, $4,000 left before I was, I was it. I was pulling the plug. Like you can't, you just can't keep, leveraging and we had to put a line in the sand so we it was it was close but you know um with those nine months off i mean at first i mean we all went through our different levels of you know what do we do and i literally i was at one point i woke up and i was like this isn't okay i need to make a difference and i need to make a change because they, I was just spiraling down. I've been like, oh, like, what do we do? Like, every day, just thinking about the shop and fast boils. And I was like, I can do something. There's something I can do for myself. And I can focus on fast boils. And then I really dug my feet in. And that's why fast boils has exploded over the past year. Because I took those nine months. And I focused on that business. Because instead of me dwelling in what wasn't happening, I could switch my mindset and be like, what can I do? I have another brand that can launch. The U S is open, you know, just because Canada was closed doesn't mean that we couldn't focus on building the business elsewhere. So that's when I really dug in and I was like, okay, let's get a PR agency. Let's. And then we, we really started to focus on that. And that's why we've been able to launch in 2020. um, Because I had that time. And I mean, you are going to get thrown as a business owner and an entrepreneur and as a stylist curveballs throughout your career, but it's really about digging deep, looking inside and say, what do I want and how do I, how can I get there? Um, because there is usually an answer, but it's, it's not easy. i uh, not going to lie. Um, but the reward and the gratitude and the feeling that you can get uh, when you're doing it is absolutely incredible. And, I think, you know, having all these different balls up in the air that you're trying to juggle with, you know, behind the chair, editorial, um, uh, launching a a business. um, I mean, part of that day by day, week by week mentality of, you know, using your notebook and scratching your the the things that you need to do and um, prioritizing what is important, what's critical, what's not important, what's not critical, and then always focusing on those the things that you need to get done to 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 be successful. I love this. <clears throat> okay, so you did a, such a good job, and like a, I feel like a very a lot of information being being told and condensed into a pretty tight timeline. And uh, I would just want to go back and like kind of uh, make sure that I'm kind of I follow along and like pull some of the takeaways out of this. So. So you, um, you get, you, your start, you get started by going to cosmetology school and then you, <clears throat> you go into renting a chair basically from day one. Is that right? Yeah. 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 And then, um, after a year or so about doing that, you're like, you know what, I'm feeling like, uh, this isn't the right path for me. I feel like maybe I should go back and, uh, get some more training and maybe some, uh, experience through somebody else. And that's when you went to the salon and found your, which two who turned into be your mentor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then after that, it's kind of like you left and you went back to doing your own thing. And, uh, but then eventually you came back to the salon and, um, so that salon that you went back to, what, when did you like go from that salon to just be salon? Are they the, the, they're not the same salon, right? No. So I was, I was working there and, uh, I was there for about another year and a half, two years, uh, gaining knowledge. I mean, and I owe my cutting and my career to John. He taught me precision uh, he taught me uh, how to just create that beautiful movement. So, and the beautiful placement. And so, I, I do owe it to John for that. 
Um, and then about two years in, I just realized that this wasn't where I wanted to be and where I wanted to be in a healthy environment. So that's when uh, I started looking and we were able to find where I am. And during that time, I just rented a chair at a, at a friend's salon while, while we built out here. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And, uh, and how, how did you communicate your, to your, to your boss and slash mentor that you were leaving? And, um, did that re- relationship go through some, uh, turmoil because of the move? Yeah, there wasn't really, uh, it was more like, uh, give me your key and you're done okay. that day. Um, so the, <laughs> there wasn't much uh, communication, uh, and yes, we, we definitely didn't see eye to eye and there was a big break in, in that relationship. Uh, but since then we have rebuilt it. Uh, and now, uh, I'm fortunate enough to host John here as a guest artist, uh, every six weeks because he opened a salon, uh, in a different location, uh, outside of Toronto but he still has his clients here. So now we're back working together. Uh, nice. Yeah. And it's been a great reunion. So that's awesome. So like, you know, making, I love that building bridges is so awesome. Absolutely. And Put water under the bridge. Don't hold on to, you know, negative feelings, let it go. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can rebuild relationships if you want to. Yeah, that's so great. And then your, you know, your story of building your businesses and then what you went through, because of covid and uh and now where you're at i mean this is just so inspiring and so exciting uh thank you so much for sharing that story uh what what type of um things like i know you mentioned stuff throughout the store at without your story but um and I'd love to hear more about uh, your your journey specifically with fast foils but I think we'll do that and uh the next time we talk before as we wrap this conversation up what type of uh you know advice do you have like last piece of advice do you have for any uh aspiring salon owners or maybe just the stylist who's getting started and here's your story it's like in in the in you like in like so like within it sounds like within five years you had done so much and for somebody who's you know trying to figure out what the path is for them do you have any like last pieces of advice yeah i mean um Really believe in, in, in what you want to do. Um, I mean, look for education. Look for a mentor. Um, it's okay not to know what you're doing. You know, I didn't feel comfortable working behind the chair till at least five years into my career. Um, and it's okay to not know what you're doing because we, no one can run before they learn how to walk and crawl. So take the time. Don't rush it. When I'm teaching my, my staff, I'm like, look, it's okay. Let's just take it slow, steady, absorb as much as possible. Um, absorb as much as possible with education. Um, and yeah, like, uh, j- enjoy it. You know, it, it, it's an amazing career. We have, we are so special to be able to do what we can do. Uh, enjoy it. Ask questions. Um, and I mean, I write everything down. I, I note everything and, um, kind of look at it at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, just enjoy it, absorb as much as possible and don't rush it. I love that. That's so good. Well, thank you so much, uh, for coming on the show. And, uh, before we end it, I like to end with a laugh and I didn't prepare you for this. So if you don't want to, if you don't have an answer, that's fine. But I like to ask all of my guests what their most embarrassing moment is when during as a stylist or a business <laughs> owner in the, in the industry. Uh, is there something that pops out in your head that maybe wasn't so funny at the time, but now you can laugh about it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely told this story um, before um, when clients ask, have you ever done something that, you know, didn't go the way you wanted it to go? And I was like, actually, yes, I do have one of those stories. Um, and once again, back when I was renting a chair, I didn't have a mentor. Uh, it was a friend of mine from the restaurant. I was doing her hair and she was a platinum blonde and she wanted some low lights. And I was like, sure, great. Um, so and at the time I was, didn't know pattern and placement the way I do now. And I had stacked highlights all the way up the side, all the way up to the front. Uh, and I just did every other. And I had to one blonde and then one 5A and then one blonde and then one 5A. <laughs> and, and literally when I, 
I took the foils out and I was like, oh <laughs> no. And she, and she saw it on my face. She's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> and I grabbed one of the stylists that was a senior stylist at the salon and I was like I need your help like I, I don't know what to do and of course you know it absorbed and it was it literally was reading like zebra stripes like black yeah, that's what I'm imagining yeah. <laughs> all the way up like this and she was like sitting in the sink with wet hair like and he literally walks into the shampoo basin and he's like what did you do <laughs> And her face is like, Ben, what's going on? And I'm like, it's okay. I'll be right back. So he pulls me aside. He's like, what did you do to her? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and we were fortunate enough to be able to cocktail it off. Um, but that was definitely one of those moments where I was like, I'll fix this. I promise. Um, but looking back at it, I was like, that's definitely one of those moments that I can laugh about now. But at the time, I was did not find it funny. And neither did yeah. she. <laughs> That's so good. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing and coming on the show. And I look forward to having you back and talking about uh, Fast Foils and building that company and learning even more about it. Yeah, I'd love to be back whenever you want to have me. Awesome. All right. Well, until next time, take care. Well, thanks so much. All right. Cheers.